All right, today's video lesson is going to focus on the principle of mathematical induction as it is applied to uh, sequences, specifically sequences that are defined by a recurrence definition. So the idea is um, we have a recurrence formula and we have a general formula. And our task here is to actually prove that the general formula can be produced with a recurrence formula as defined. So, um, in other words, our proposition here is uh, we need to find that this is, in fact, the nth term formula, the general formula, if this is the recursive formula that generates a sequence. It's always, in my, in my opinion, it's really important to state the proposition, the thing that you're trying to show. And uh, I'll, I'll restate the proposition a little bit later when we get to step three of the induction process. But it's really important to make sure that not only you have a clear perception of where you're headed, but it's clear to the reader that you know where you're headed. So as the induction process goes, we need to prove that it's true at first. In this case, it's relatively simple because all we have to do is uh, notice that the first term was already given to us at 7. So if I use n equals 1 in the recursive formula that I'm, or the general formula that I'm trying to prove, I also get 7. So it's definitely true. Once again, though, make sure you're explicit about showing there's two different sides to the coin here. We've got the um, the one side, which is the definition, and the other side, which is the statement you're trying to prove. You need to show that the definition matches the statement. Now for the assumption. Again, it's really important that your assumption is stated in mathematical terms, in equation form, because um, especially with sequences in series, you're definitely going to use this expression somewhere in the red in the step three. So let's let n equal k plus one. And again, this is the second time where I'm going to be really clear about my proposition. If n is equal to k plus 1, then this formula would look like this, where we have 5 times 2 to the k plus 1 equals 3. So my job is to prove that the k plus 1th term is also true if the kth term is true. So the only thing I have to work off is the given stuff, which is the recursive formula. So I know that when uh, n equals k plus 1, that we will have 2 times the previous value added to 3, and that will produce the next term in the sequence. So all I have to do is substitute my assumption in for u sub k. u sub k has been assumed to be equal to this value here, so I put that in. And I'm going to distribute the 2, and then add the 3, and I very easily come up with 5 times 2 times 2 to the k, and 2 times 2 to the k is equal to 2 to the k plus 1. And I got my assumption over here, or my assertion right up over here. So it only took me two steps to get where I needed to go. So there's a lot of formality in this proof and very little actual you know, manipulations in mathematics. Speaking of formality, we need a full statement at the end here. I'm going to make this right really fast. Since the formula works for n equals 1, and if it works for n equals k, then it also works for n equals k plus 1, comma, the, the formula works for all positive integers by the principle of mathematical induction. Again, this is a terrible uh, way to lose a mark, but if you don't make this statement using the three parts of the process, um, the IB does not give you a mark for your reasoning. So you have to sort of uh, use your words to sort of describe that you understand the principle of induction, even if you don't, because basically you, you just restate, well, it was true here, our assumption here led to this truth, therefore it's true all the time. Um, so g get comfortable making that statement. It's a little tedious, but um, you kind of have to get used to it. Now this sequence <laughs> is a little bit different because the recursive definition requires that we use two previous terms to get the consecutive value or to get the next value up. So I need to know u sub 1 and u sub 2 in order to get, or sorry, wait a second. Yeah, that's right. I need to know u sub 1 and u sub 2 in order to find the value of u sub 3. It's like the Fibonacci numbers. You need to know the first two numbers to get the third. So they give us the first two values. So what we really have to do in this particular proof is not prove it true for um, n equals 1. We need to prove that it's true for n equals 1 and n equals 2 because we need two terms to be true um, in order to generate our sequence. So once again, we have the given statements for u sub 1 and u sub 2, and then we have the formula that we're trying to prove for u sub 1 and u sub 2. And I have to show that the formula, recursive formula, or sorry, not the, I'm sorry, the general formula, um, actually produces the first two terms that were defined in the recursive. 
Now, once again, where there are assumptions, because there are two terms within the recursive statement, we need to assume truth for two consecutive terms and then prove that it's also true for the third term along that chain. So we have two assumptions. The first is that u sub k um, validly uses the formula correctly and that u sub k plus 1 also uses the formula correctly and that we are going to assume that these are true for the next two consecutive terms anywhere in the chain. Now we're going to let n equal k plus 2, the third step up. So my goal or objective is to show that when n equals k plus 2 that we just have 3 to the k plus 2 power minus 2 to the k plus 2 power and that will be the next general term. But here's what we have to work with. We have the recursive formula where u sub k plus 2 is going to be 5 times the term before it minus 6 times the term before that. Here is where our assumptions come into play. This is the k plus 1 term. We said it was going to be true. And this is the kth term, and we said that was going to be true. So we substitute those into my recursive formula, and the rest is mathematical cosmetics. I distribute the 5 and the negative 6. I group like terms together, so we have uh, 3 to the k and 3 to the k. Notice what I did here, by the way. Um, I have 3 to the k plus 1, which is actually 3 times 3 to the k. 3 times 5 is 15, so that's where the 15 came from. Same here, we have 2 to the k times 2 to the 1, 2 times 5 is 10, so that's where the 10 came out over here, the negative 10. So, nonetheless, I have the 3 to the k's grouped together plus the 2 to the k's grouped together, and it produces 9 times 3 to the k because 15 minus 6 is 9. It produces uh, 4 times 2 to the k and subtracted, which is a good sign. Um, and then I recognize that 9 is a power of 3, 4 is a power of 2, and we use our exponent rules here um, to simplify, and we could see that that's the statement we wanted to have. And so that was pretty seamless. Since the formula holds for n equals 1 and n equals 2, and the truth of the formula, uh, assumed truth of the formula for n equals k and k plus 1 implies truth for n equals k plus 2, the formula holds for all integers positive by the principle of mathematical induction. I hope this was a helpful video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.